The World Migration Report 2013 has published and models a growing debate on how the benefits of migration can be harnessed for development. Despite progress following the first UN General Assembly High Level Dialogue on International Migration and Development in 2006, migration remains inadequately in integrated into development frameworks at national and local levels and public perceptions of migrants and migration are often very negative. The World Migration Report 2017 focuses instead on migrants as persons and how the migration experience has affected their lives in positive or negative ways. Instead of being the passive subjects of inquiry, migrants should be given the opportunity to tell their stories. This emphasis on the experiential dimension as opposed to the usual focus on disembodied, disembodied socio-economic dynamics could open the door to policy making that is more attuned to human needs. Right now, the new government has come up with the, with the new structures and we have now that migration in our ministry. It was scattered all over, but now it's now under our ministry and uh, I am now try to come up with something. It is a unique, but we want, to, we want to make it to be a directorate so that all issues concerning labor migrations are addressed. We are at the first stage with the partnership with IOM in formulating a national migration policy. This policy will go a long way in giving general guidance to the balance between facilitation of travelers, enforcement of applicable immigration laws, and ended and other than government policies. The report, we believe, contains key highlights in the way we need to rethink about the way we manage our migration. It is our hope that we'll be able to go through it critically so that we can come up with ways of implementing the most important aspects as have been highlighted in the report. It is no doubt that a lot of effort and resources have been put to, the, to coming up with that report. And we are very grateful that as practitioners of migration management, we'll be able to look for ways of coming up with mechanisms of implementing what is implementable within the legislations of this country. And in so doing, we will, as a necessity, involve the various actors who have a stake in migration management. It is a report that focuses not on the socio-economic impact, but on the evaluative and experimental uh, experiences of the people themselves, their satisfaction, their aspirations, the level of which that they have been able to, re to realize or not their own dreams. And I think this is a very interesting angle, and it adds value to the way that migration is looked at. And secondly, it is a report that not as usual focuses on the uh, south-north migration, but it looks into the migration trends and patterns and the level of satisfaction between the countries of the south, the people who develop, for, uh, the people who move from one developing country to another developing country, from a country in the region to a, near, a nearby country, and this also casts important light on the movement, the well-being, and the aspiration of many such people. Another important aspect of this report, in my opinion, it gives an interesting comparative data, not only on the movements and trends across the regions and between countries, but also it includes insights, at least the data collected from 25,000 first-generation migrants, and it also included an incredible number of 450,000 native-born migrants. So that, I think, represents a good sample and the insights that comes from it, I think, mark the way as to how we could take into account the well-being, the welfare of the migrants and how we could enhance that, whether in the uh, host country, the countries from which they belong, or agencies like us who help to facilitate uh, the movement of people.